Are you somebody who runs Zoom meetings or maybe workshops and presentations online and you want a way to be a little bit calmer, more organized and streamlined? Or maybe you want to spend more time focusing on the room that you're in and the people you're with rather than trying to figure out how to find your controls and actually manage the meeting. If you are looking for that, you are in the right place because today I'm going to share how I am using my stream deck to help streamline my meetings, help run my workshops and my Zoom calls. And it has been a game changer. The stream deck is one of my favorite pieces of technology. Now, if you are new here, please say hello in the comments if you're watching live. If not, if you're watching the replay, say hello in the comments. I'd love to know if you are watching. And if we have never met before, my name is Kat and Today we're talking about the Stream Deck for Zoom calls and what I like to do is help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. So let's get into this. And I would love to hear from you if you are watching, whether live now or on the replay, do you use a Stream Deck? Have you heard of it and you're interested? Or maybe this is the very first time that you've ever heard of a Stream Deck and buckle in, this is great. These are the types of things I get really, really excited about. I consider myself an enthusiastic nerd, and this is one of the examples of where I really get nerdy, but it's so helpful that I want other people to know about it. So this is what we're gonna talk about today, the Stream Deck. I'm actually going to show you how to set it up. So I'll do a little bit of a demonstration and I'll share with you how I have used my Stream Deck to set up shortcuts for Zoom and I think my favorite part might be exiting meetings quickly. I always found that last little end when you're trying to say goodbye and you're trying to mouse over to the exit, that's always a little bit awkward. So yeah. Okay, and I've got, I see, by the way, Andy's here, Chris is here, Lee is here. Thanks so much for showing up live. And it looks like Lee is planning on buying one. Let's see here if we can throw this up here. I'm having no luck with the comments right now, so I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so when it comes to the Stream Deck, what is it and what are the different types? So if you are brand new to this, then I'll give you a little bit of background. So there are three different sizes of Stream Deck. So this is actually a physical product. I consider it the companion to my mouse. It sits right beside my mouse. You are going to see mine in a moment. And it's really a remote control. So when I think back when I was, in person doing presentations, I would have a little slide remote where I could just easily control my presentation. This is the same kind of idea is that you've got this external accessory that's going to help you to stay focused and you can just do the thing you need so you can focus on where you are and what you are doing. Now, of the three sizes, you can see there's a really tiny one with only six keys, which I think most people familiar with the Stream Deck probably wouldn't recommend Maybe if you had a secondary device that only had a few things, or maybe you're only doing a couple of things with it, perhaps that might work. There's then the middle one, which is the 15 key. That's the regular quote unquote stream deck. That's the one that I have. And then there's the third one, which is the XL, which if you are using it regularly, you're probably going to want that one. I know that for me, choosing the middle one with the 15 keys, that was a budgetary thing. I am a, a relatively new entrepreneur. I don't have a lot of extra money, so I had to choose wisely. I wanted the Stream Deck, and so I made the purchase of the middle one. If I had more, I would go for the XL. So that'll be a future <laughs> that's on my wish list. But I will show you how I am using the 15 key because I do have a few different profiles that allow me to quickly switch between the different profiles so that I can use it for something like Zoom. I can switch back and use it for something like this live stream right now. I'm using it with Ecamm, which is the streaming software that I like to use for my lives. And I see, yeah, Andy, I agree with you. I recommend the XL if your budget stretches. It's not cheap. This is an investment. But I would say that if you are a person who is regularly running meetings, running workshops or presentations where you need things to flow smoothly, this is probably the type of place where you would maybe say, okay, what in the long term am I going to do and what can I afford right now? Also, I guess physical real estate, the bigger one, <laughs> it takes up more room. And that's, you want to keep those things in mind. And I will show you how you can use the 15 one today. So, and welcome Dr. Ela. so glad you could join us um, live today. All right, so a few things that I want to say about the Stream Deck is that it is programmable. 
And there are some techniques you can use to have hotkeys or shortcuts that are less expensive, but the beauty of the Stream Deck is that once you've programmed it, then you can, you can easily change it. So if you are doing something different, you can just go in, change the keys, set them up however you want, and the buttons will change. And that's, that's I think what's really, really nice about it is that it's a digital product, it has those different features and you're going to see in a second. So let's show you this setup. I am going to switch my camera. So now you can see I'm sharing my screen, but I also, if you look <laughs> below me, that is my actual stream deck. And this is my actual hand over the buttons. The camera is not great. It's my little webcam, so you can't see a high resolution, but on the screen, when you look over at my stream deck software, which is open on my page, you can actually get a clear look at my default profile. So this is how I leave my Stream Deck most of the time when I am simply working at my computer. Now, right now, because I am actively running a live stream, I would typically be on this profile, which is my Ecamm Live profile. This is where I can toggle between my next scenes, I can switch the camera view, I could put a little like and subscribe, which will show up on the screen so I can have those things handy. And this is the type of thing that I can have ready for my live streams. If I were to press this little guy on the corner, it would end the stream. So I'm not gonna press that. But what I've done, as you can see on the side here, or if you look on the screen here, is that I have these little, they're Stream Deck icons that I have created. And I use these to toggle back and forth between my profiles because I just showed you my default profile. So if I push that, you can see both on the Stream Deck and on my screen that it has gone back to my default profile. You will also see that I have a Zoom Stream Deck profile here on the right. So if I press this Zoom default profile, now all of a sudden you see the gray icons. So these are custom icons that I created. I made them myself in Canva. And I also, I can show you, I created a blue pack as well. <laughs> this is in the Zoom blue. And if you have a Stream Deck or you're getting a Stream Deck and you want these, these icons, you don't wanna have to spend the time making it yourself, in the description below, I actually have a link so you can grab these as well. So you don't have to worry about spending that time. These icons are already ready. Now with these icons, what I did is I took a look at Zoom and I said, what are the things I do most often? Mostly as a host of a Zoom meeting, but also when I'm just a participant in a meeting, what are some of the actions that I'm regularly taking? If you take a look at Zoom, and I can show you that in a moment, you can see all of the different keyboard shortcuts, and those are your hotkeys, and that's what you're going to program into your Stream Deck, and I'll actually show you how I set these up in a moment. So when it comes to this, these are working when your Zoom is on the screen. So right now, if I were to be running a Zoom meeting, the way I've got it set up is that all of these controls, if I were to press these, they would take actions in Zoom. Now, if I have a Zoom meeting running and I have another program open in the foreground, another application, maybe I'm doing a screen sharing, there is an option that's called global shortcuts where even if Zoom's kind of in the background, you can still have your keys, your hotkeys handy. So those keyboard shortcuts will still work. Right now, I personally have decided that I will only use these when Zoom is the active application on my computer mostly because I don't want to accidentally set off something else in another program. But the, the lovely thing about the Stream Deck is that you can play around with it. Nothing is, nothing's engraved. You're not carving this in stone. You can actually just switch these really quickly. I also see Dr. Elo said, I just bought one. That is so exciting. Man, yes, you are, you're gonna love it so much. Okay, so make sure that I, okay configuring your Stream Deck. So on this screen right now, you can see that I have this window open and you saw an example of how I was able to toggle between some profiles, my default profile, which is where it usually is. And just before I go on to the Zoom one, I just wanna share a little bit about this profile. So this top left corner, these, these keys, actually, sorry, all of these ones here, these eight, they are for opening applications. 
So whether it's something simple, like I want to use the calculator, all I have to do is press this button, the calculator pops open. Whereas before I would have to go a few steps to dig and get the calculator because it's not always readily available on my screen. Opening Zoom, if I just wanna open Zoom and get in there, all I do is press this button and Zoom opens. Notion, which has my heart, I love Notion. It's where I stay organized and do a lot of my work. Just press that button and Notion opens. So I tried to think of what are these things that I need at a moment's notice and I want to open quickly. All of these on the bottom and the side, these are custom, meaning I made the icons and I also decided what was going to be on there so that I could readily have it available. So in the corner, this is how I switch to my Ecamm Live. So if I press that, we'll go back to that live streaming profile. If I go back to this page, I have things like open my calendar. I use a Google calendar to stay organized. So that launches my Google calendar. Here I have a screenshot. I take screenshots all of the time. So I just push this button and all of a sudden I'm ready to take a screenshot. I don't have to hold down. I think it's command shift four on my computer if I remember correctly. I don't have to do that. I just push the screenshot button. And here this launches emojis. So if I want to add in an emoji with my keyboard, if you didn't know this, if you are on a Mac, it is control command space. That is how you open the little window. Let's see what happens. Will this show up on the screen? Oh, it showed up on the other monitor. This is what it looks like. It opens this little emoji and these are the ones I use the most. I laugh a lot and I blush a lot and apparently hands in the air <laughs> get used the most. But that is a shortcut that I have set up. That one was a little trickier to do, full disclosure. And this top right corner, I love. It is quickly exiting an application. If I just want to make sure that my computer is not running too many things, I can just press this little X and the, the current application will close. And I use that all of the time. So that is my default profile. Okay, so let's talk now about the Zoom profile. So if we pop over to the Zoom profile, these are the keys that I personally chose. And let's actually, let's open Zoom. So actually we'll pop back for a second. We're going to open Zoom. It is now opening on my other monitor, but I am going to show you. So if we bring, you recognize this. So let's actually open our preferences. And if you have your preferences open, just pop down to keyboard shortcuts. So when you are on keyboard shortcuts on your computer, so whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you can see all of the keyboard shortcuts specific to your computer here on Zoom. These are all of the shortcuts that are available right now for Zoom so that you don't have to use your mouse, you can use the shortcut. So you'll see there are a lot of them and I just picked the top ones that are applicable, applicable to me. And then here we have global shortcuts. So even if Zoom is not at the foreground and you have another application open, you can still use them. Now it's not applicable for all of them, but for some of them, you can toggle these on and off. So maybe you're doing a screen share and you need to cough and you wanna quickly mute yourself, depending on how you've got your audio set up, you could do that in the, in the foreground. Personally, I have not set these up. So, okay, <laughs> what you do is you're going to look for the shortcut and then you're going to place it in the hotkey. So let's actually, sh I'll show you how you can set this up. So I'm gonna put this, this part down. I'll put this off to the side a little bit. Let's set up a new profile. You're always gonna have a little default one. I like to just delete that. And what we want to do is go down the side. On the right side are all the different types of controls that you can add to your stream deck. For example, a stream deck control. The one I use the most is switch profile. So if I wanted to add this here to jump between my different profiles, I would add switch profile. This is the default that you'll see. And as you can, if you look down below at my little camera, you can see that as I set this up, it's changing right on the stream deck. So you can see right away the changes that you are making. Now in this example, I want to be able to jump back to my default profile. So now I have it, it's set to my default profile. And then I personally like to get a little creative and have my own custom icons. So if you did grab the pack, <laughs> why can't I pull this up? Of course. So if you grabbed this pack, you'll actually see, okay, Zoom, we need to just close you for a moment. Profile icons. 
So I have three different ones that I've set up for you. So maybe you want the blue one and all you do, there are two options. You can either, if you want to change the icon down here on the configure, you can say set from file and it'll open a browser or even easier, just drag it over here. And now you have changed your icon. So any file, it's a square file. I do 288 by 288 and just plop that over. And there you go. Now we've set up switching the profile. But now let's look at a hotkey. So hotkey is under the system and let's set up muting and unmuting. Now this is where we do have to go back to zoom and open the preferences. So let's do that. I'm going to mute unmute audio. So this is the shortcut. So we want shift command A for a Mac. And what you do is when you've got the hotkey, it will actually observe your keystrokes. So I am on my keyboard going to enter shift command A. So now I have shift command A and you can see it right here on the key. There's a little title and you can decide whether you want that to show up. You can either select it and delete or under title, you can just untoggle show title. It will go away. And then you want to grab your icon. So if you grab the pack that I've got, there's blue and gray. So let's grab one of the blue ones. And this is to mute and unmute your microphone. So you just, oop, not there, there, here. You want it down at the bottom. So now I have this button and I have purposely put the buttons that I use the most in the corners because I can easily, without having to look down, although I just look down, I can reach over and I can just feel the corners of the stream deck. And then it just makes it easier if you really want to still stay paying attention. So that's one example of a hotkey. So you can do that for all of those zoom shortcuts. You can put those hotkeys in, but some there's an example of the hotkey switch. And this means that a similar action has two different shortcuts and, but you want them on the same key. So let's drag this over And a great example for zoom. If you are hosting a meeting, there might be an occasion where people have their microphones on and you really need the room to quiet down and you want to turn off everybody's microphone. So what you can do, there is a shortcut for that and it is asked to, or so there's unmute all, but there's also mute all. So this is muting all of the audio for everyone in the room, except for the host, which would be you. And there is your shortcut. So, and it looks like you can actually create your own shortcuts. So that could be a good option if the other application you're using uses a similar shortcut. Just thinking of that <laughs> right off the top as we do this live. So for mute audio for everyone. So this is something that you might want to be able to do easily. So in hotkey one, which if you look down here, there are two little dots. Hotkey one is this first dot. So we are going to mute everyone with that. So for me, that is control command M. So I've now assigned that. And then the second one, we, if we toggle here, this will be the next one. But for hotkey two, we want ask everyone to unmute. Maybe at the end of the call, you want everyone to say goodbye. And so this is going to be control command U. Very logical choices. So now let's drag over the icons. So if I want to mute all participants except the host, I'm going to drag this down here. And then the alternate is if I want to unmute everyone, I'm going to press the button again. And this time it is unmute all participants. And I have a slightly different icon. So this one has the microphone on. This one has the microphone with a strike through. So that's an example when you might use the hotkey switch. It's a, they're connected and you can press that down or unpress that. And that's how you can set up a hotkey switch. Let me know if you have any questions. I see Paul got yeah, some deck wisdom here. <laughs> so glad you could join. All right. So that is how you set these up. But there are a lot of other options like adding a website. So for example, I told you that I have my calendar that I open. So if you wanted to add a website, just drag over here and all you have to do is enter the URL of your website. So when you press that button, then it will just launch that. And as before, you can just make your own key if you want. Otherwise it will just have this little icon here. There are also other icons that you can grab online. I know Stream Deck does have a few different profiles available. 
Another example is open. So in this, I use a lot of open application shortcuts. So if I wanted to open up Zoom, let's say, I would just go down here and it, this changes depending on the button. So I'd say choose. I would go into my applications. And so here I just scroll down to Zoom and say this, and it automatically grabs the icon from the computer. So you don't have to make an icon for every single program. It's already built in. And as you can see, although not very clearly below, these are all updating and I'm going to remove the title because I know that that's Zoom. But also here you can see that you can change, do you want the title in the middle? Do you want the title on the top? Do you wanna change the font? All of that can be done here. Maybe I don't want this in the corner though. All you have to do if you've already set it up is just drag it somewhere else. So now you can see down here, or hopefully you saw, it just updated in real time. That's the thing that's so amazing. And this is why it's worth that extra investment. This tool is programmable and customizable and Really, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> so it's right at your fingerprints. Now, for those of you here, I know a couple of you in the audience are familiar with the, the, the Stream Deck. What's your favorite part? Let me know in the chat, what's your favorite part of the Stream Deck? I would love to hear that. The other thing I wanna to draw to your attention is that if you are doing workshops and presentations, which is the core audience that I'm trying to talk to here, how to run a better, more engaging, professional looking presentation, you will also be pleased to know that there are some options in Stream Deck for Keynote or PowerPoint, depending on what you're using. So for example, if you are a PowerPoint user, you can actually have a play or stop your presentation. You can have a next slide. You can have a previous slide. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I wanna jump right to the start or jump right to the end. So you can also set those up. You can customize where you want those to go. And they're already connected to those programs. So once you've set those up, you are already good to go. You are set up with PowerPoint. So let's say you are running a Zoom call where you have a PowerPoint presentation, then you can actually have these all on the same Stream Deck. So I could right now be setting up this presentation so that I'm going to run my slides and I'm going to have my Zoom call. So that's an example of how you can actually mix these things together and you can customize it. So maybe for one presentation, you need to have these slides or these buttons available, but maybe for another one, you want different ones available. So that is a quick tour. Let's see. Okay, Andy says, I love the fact that it is so customizable. Let's just try this again. I'm just gonna try one more time. There we go. <laughs> I've got your comment up here on the screen. Thank you for sharing that. And okay, let's also, what else we've got? the ease of use it provides. Yes, I love it. It just, it's, it's those little things. It just carves off a little bit of time every time. Um, okay, what else? <laughs> Paul here says that uh, his cat Scribbles prefers the X keys. <laughs> so there's that. All right. And yeah, so Lee, I am sold. I use Keynote a lot. Yes, this is such an amazing product for just being able to manage stuff. So it's not, I think I learned about it just through primarily live streaming. However, I actually use it more outside of live streams just to stay organized, keep my workflow and all of that. Now, while I'm here, I do wanna show you in this configuration, you can actually open preferences and this is where you can make some changes. So what is going to be your default profile? So you can check that off. You could change that depending on what you want. You can also toggle things like having this profile. So when I open Ecamm Live, which is what I use to stream live, it will actually switch to this profile. I've played around with having that set up and taking that away, but I've mostly, <laughs> I kind of, I'm, I'm mixed. Because I can toggle so easily, between my different profiles because I set up those switch profile buttons. I don't need it necessarily, but sometimes it's nice to have that be open. And here's an example. Let's take a look. Actually, I'll toggle down here. So here's an example of a Zoom workshop where I would be using my Ecamm Live software, presenting with Keynote, and then having a Zoom window open. So the way that I set this up is I have all of the orange 
which I got care of live streaming pros. They have a, a great icon pack as well. So these are all Ecamm Live. So making sure that I can toggle between the next scene. So for example, if I press next scene right now, I go to my main cam because that's the next scene that I have set up. If I go to previous scene, we'll go back to this setup. So that's this, and this would be showing in my Zoom call. If I wanna switch to my main camera, I can do all of that. Here in the top right, I have my keynote slides. So this would advance my slide. So I could do that with the stream deck. And here on the bottom, if I wanted to quickly mute or unmute myself, open or close the chat window, mute everyone on the call, and then also the participants window. If I wanna open the participants window and see everyone that's there and switching between speaker and gallery view is something I like to be able to do really quickly. That's something that I have kind of set up now because I personally, when I'm running a Zoom workshop using my streaming software, Ecamm, I actually typically will have my presentation on a different device just to save on the demand on the computer. I don't want everything running at once. That can actually start to overheat. It takes up a lot of processing power. And that's something that I wouldn't necessarily have this open all the time. I would be managing my slides from my secondary device and showing, bringing in the slides that way. But that's an example if you're on one device of how you could set all of that up. Now, are there any questions that you have about this? I would love to know and be able to answer them alive. And if you are watching the replay, put them in the comments. I would also love to know what would you use this for? If you kind of got creative, is there something you're doing regularly on your device that would really help to have those keys right beside you? Now, the other thing I want to say is just remind you that if you are interested in using this for Zoom and you don't want to spend any time making all of your own icons, you can head over to gumroad.com slash catmelvahill and that's where I have those icons available for you. The link is also below. And if you are interested in a Stream Deck, I also have a link. You can check out the information if you have never had one before. Again, like we said at the start, think about how you're going to use it. You can get away with using a 15 key like I am by having a few different profiles, but if the budget allows it, the XL would be really nice to have. And as I said, <laughs> it is on my wish list. So yeah, and Chris is saying, I saw it on a few videos. You can have it, yes, okay, that's a great point. So Chris says, you can have it turn on and off lights and appliances, things on Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can, which is really cool. So if we actually, let's hop back over here. So in your Stream Deck software, if you go down to the bottom, we've got this more actions. You can actually, it launched it in the wrong window. You can see that there are different applications that are already there and you can load those on. So if you are using, say, Streamlabs Philips Hue lights, so that's a great example. If you have Philips Hue lights, you can control your lights using the Stream Deck. So that's just one example, but there are many other examples and a lot of great videos of how people are using their Stream Deck to make their workflow, they're just saving time and shaving off all of those little seconds over and over really does make a difference. Um, all right, so I don't see, oh, <laughs> Paul says, ignore all my comments. Sure thing, will do. All right, <laughs> buy cat's icons, help her get money for an XL. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I should use all of my icon sales to to save towards my wish list and get that XL. That would be, that would be wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, and yes, Ken says I have a an XL and I use it with vMix, so that's a PC streaming software and it operates many other programs. Yeah, Photoshop, Word, yeah, anything where there is a keyboard shortcut, you can, you can set up your Stream Deck. So occasionally, it's a little buggy. It meaning you might have it set up. There have been a couple of times where I've got Zoom open and I press the button, it's not look, working right away, but that's why you just wanna practice. So anytime you are running something, just try it out, practice in advance and get comfortable with it. All right, so let me know if you use this for Zoom calls or presentations, how does it work? Does it make your life easier? I would love to hear from you and I will see you all next week. All right. My stream deck is not on the right page to end my stream smoothly. So lesson learned. Bye everyone.